in the United States, many people living with mental illness struggle to find and maintain the treatment they need. They may become frequent users of mental health clinics, hospital emergency rooms, and jails. At mental health clinics, they find the treatment they need. But for many, maintaining this over the long term is difficult due to disruptive life events, treatment side effects, or other reasons. When treatment lapses or is ineffective, they may find themselves in crisis, which can land them in the emergency room or even in jail, at great cost to themselves and to the communities they live in. Public investments in emergency medical services and jails helps manage mental health crises as they arise, but doesn't treat their underlying causes and doesn't prevent them from occurring in the future. If communities can identify people who are at risk of crisis before the crisis occurs and connect them to the services that they need, can they prevent these crises from occurring in the first place? We partnered with Johnson County, Kansas to answer this question. We're working with historical data from their emergency medical services, their mental health services, and their criminal justice system to identify people at risk of entering jail. We begin with a Venn diagram of how the residents of Johnson County have interacted with these services over the past six years. The people most likely to enter jail in 2015 were those who had a history with the county mental health services and who'd had a previous jail booking. But this doesn't tell us which individuals in particular are most at risk of entering jail. To answer that question, we built a machine learning model based on this historical data and individual characteristics, such as demographic information and risk factors. And this model gives us individual risk scores for every person in this population based on their risk of entering jail. <laughs> um, so we can sort this risk by how like, uh, by, by sort this list by how risky we think people are in terms of entering jail and give this list to mental health workers in Johnson County who are already embedded in police teams there and who respond with them to manage behavioral health crises as they arise. But with our list, these mental health workers can prioritize their outreach and find people before a crisis occurs and without having to wait for a 911 call. If, we, if these mental health workers reached out to the 200 individuals we identified as most at risk in 2015, every other call they made would reach someone who ended up in jail that year. So from those 200 individuals, 104 of them were booked into jail for an average of over two months each, for a total of over 19 years of jail time, and at a cost to the county of over a quarter of a million dollars, money that, if saved, could be reinvested in preventative treatment. We're especially hopeful that intervention here could be effective because on average, these individuals had been out of contact with county mental health services for over two years at the time of their booking. In other words, these are people who had fallen off the radar for mental health services and might benefit from being reconnected to treatment. With just four calls a week, Johnson County has the opportunity to get in touch with a population in need, to keep 104 people out of jail, and to keep these individuals involved in their families, jobs, and community for 7,000 additional days that would otherwise be spent in jail. <laughs>